retirement are asking. Will I outlive my money? Retirement questions like these and many more will be answered every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on planning for a better and safer retirement with hosts Francois and Julian Pozanet. Francois and Julian will help you put your retirement puzzle together. Catch planning for a better and safer retirement Saturdays at 9 a.m. on Ocala's News Talk, The Source 96.3 FM and 1370 a.m. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. This Friday morning, what is the big movie week in Ocala? We have the uh, Silver Springs International Film Festival that started Wednesday. There's a big, big night tonight with a lot of films being shown of a couple different venues. Uh, I think it wraps up tomorrow and then Sunday. I guess you can go watch the, the ones that are the winners, right? Yes. Uh, so it's a, it's a big thing. And, and I know, I don't know a whole lot about how movies are produced, um, but, but here, here's an observation. We just had this discussion about how technology has changed music and technology has changed movies as well. But you know, the core, as we were talking about, is always the story. Story. Always mm-hmm. the story. I, I can remember um, one year my TV went out and I, oh, I had this little old black and white TV and it was it was around Christmas time and I, I turned it on and I had this bad picture of this great movie called, what, what's that one with uh, Jimmy Stewart in, at Christmas time? Oh, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. life. So, so The Wonderful Life comes on, okay. And... And you realize that, you know, the, okay, I have to deal with this bad picture. I have to deal with this bad sound. And all of a sudden, I didn't even remember that the picture was bad and the sound was bad because the story was so good. I was, yeah. I was into it. <laughs> so I really, I really truth, truly think that computers and technology may have changed how movies are made. But ultimately, the one thing that is always, always going to be a human element is the story. Mm. Uh, we have a, a guest on the phone who is not only talented at making movies, but at writing great stories. Uh, Soman Chanani, I hope I'm saying his name right, is on the phone. He has had films in over 150 international film festivals. He has won at least 30 awards that are juried and audience awards. I don't know exactly that I understand that. He has over a million hits on the YouTube videos he's put out there. And he's got the book, This Is How I Know, that he's a great writer. Uh, and I think this is the book that they're going to make into a movie, right? Yep. And he's a New York Times best-selling author. So the School of Good and Evil: A World Without Princes. And uh, so I'll let him tell you about the story. Gosh, it's just a short interview this morning. Good morning, Soman. How are you? Good. Uh, thanks for having me so much on the show. Oh, you're welcome. Where are you right now? <laughs> I'm in New York. Uh, you know, up early before I go on tour tomorrow. Um, I'm heading on a nine-city tour, so. Uh, you know, just getting my last days in at home. You you may not have even ever heard of the city you're talking to right now, Ocala, Florida. But we have have you heard <laughs> of us? Of course, because um, it's funny. Uh, my mother was born in New York, but she went with her family to Ocala. That was the first place they kind of you know set up shop. And in fact, there's um, a couple streets named after her and her sisters in Ocala because they were the first Indians. No, oh, you're kidding me. What, what, what are the streets? No. What are the streets? I think there's, there's Sheila Street somewhere in Ocala, and there's Pamela Street, uh, which is her sister. So they both have streets. Um, really? My grandmother was like, you know, like one of the first Indians in, uh, in Florida. She was very glamorous, and so, you know, she oh, made wow. her way into kind of home. Well, who knew? Uh, <laughs> who knew? I, I was here. I was thinking because a lot of times we speak to you, you film guys. You don't know where. Where is Ocala? I always have to say, you know where Disney World is? It's ninety miles north of that. <laughs> well, we have no, to find no. the streets. Yeah, yeah. We will find the streets. So anyway, we have. Somehow we have to find the streets. And we have this big film festival happening here, and we have some very talented filmmakers that are not just from here, but from all over the world that are here today and this mm-hmm. week. So one of these days you'll have a film here. Oh. But it, but anyway, I wanted to ask I you about what I said because I, what what came first for you? Was it the ability to craft a story or the or the interest and ability to make a film? 
you know, I was always a story guy. Like, I think when I was young, my dad used to nickname me America's Storyteller because he felt like I couldn't ever just say what happened. There was always, like, a, a pterodactyl involved or, like, you know, the abominable snowman showed up when my lunch got, you know, taken from me or something. Like, there was always... Oh, wow. People <laughs> to the story. It's kind of funny, um, yeah. And so... He was like, you are going to either be a writer or you're, you know, you're going to be unemployed for the rest of your life. Because it was like, that was the only thing I was really good at, you know? So I think it was, I didn't know what it was going to be. I didn't really want to write novels, I think, because I felt like it was going to be isolating. And so I went into film first. And then I think what ended up happening is, the problem with film is that these days it's so corporate that you lose a lot of control over your own work. And also you know, they just don't go for original stories so much anymore. So I realized that the way to kind of have a career in film as a writer is to start by doing books. And then you can, you can A, get paid twice, because you get paid for the book and the movie, and B, you can control your own material from the start. And so that's how the whole School for Good and Evil happened, because it was supposed to be a movie first, and then I realized, let me do it as books, because it's to what control. And, and, and the irony is that a lot of the stories that we consider classic were probably in, call, called indies or, or, or you know, the, the snoot was, what do we call the snooty nose looking down on things when, when they were new? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I'm sure Hans Christian Andersen, oh, who's he? Oh, that kid writes all the time. <laughs> they don't take him seriously, right? Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I wish we had more time with you, but uh, we don't. So can you give us a, like a thumbnail sketch, a movie trailer version, if you will, of your book? <laughs> oh, sure. It, um, it's, a, it's sort of a teen fantasy series about this school that trains, you know, fairy tale heroes and villains. And it's about these two girls who are best friends, one who everyone assumes is going to be this kind of next great, you know, witch uh, because she sort of wears black and lives in a graveyard and it's just sort of a, a hideous personality and then the second girl is this you know beautiful blonde girl who everyone knows is going to go to the school for good to become a princess and then they end up switched into the wrong schools and the, the beautiful girl ends up in the school for evil and the kind of witchy girl ends up in the school for good and the question is why and sort of it's a three book series that sort of looks at you know friendship and, and what it means for two girls who are, you know, essentially joined at the hip to kind of go through that experience of learning who they are, plus, you know, a boy comes between them. It's, it's sort of a, a big kind of dark look at fairy tales, turning it back to, to what fairy tales used to be, you know, way back when. Yeah, fairy tales used to be hideous. <laughs> but, but you also have humor in your book, too. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing, the sad thing I always felt like, you know, I grew up on Disney movies and everything, and I knew the original stories, and I felt like Disney always took sort of the darkness out of them, and they also took the kind of, you know, really subversive edge, the, the real dark humor out of them, and so I wanted to put that back, and so, you know, at, the, at their core, they're kind of dark comedies, even though there's a lot of, you know, melodrama and stuff in them as well, so, you know, and now um, Universal's making them into movies, uh, so that's what we're working on now. Well, and, and that's kind of interesting, because uh, it was a calculated risk that you won, it was like taking a bet, and you, and you, you got the jackpot. It was, uh, I mean, it's, like, it's funny because you can say, this is what's going to happen. This is the plan. And this was one of the very few times in my life where, you know, it just exactly what was supposed to happen happened every step of the way. Wow. Now, of course, we're, we're working on making the movie and nothing is going as planned because, you know, once you start working with the studio, it becomes a whole other animal. But, right, right. Um, you know, up until, up until the movie sale, it was, uh, you know, everything was going exactly as, as planned. And you have something other uh, interesting in your book. You also have a, a chat with you and a deleted scenes. That is fast. I found yeah, very well, I fascinating. Think, because I think what we're doing in the, the version that's coming out on Tuesday is, um, you know, we're giving people a peek at the third book. And uh, the, in the first book, you know, I had so much stuff I couldn't put in there because, you know, we didn't want it to be like 800 pages. So, you know, we took some of the best scenes that I couldn't put in, and, and we're sort of releasing them kind of as, like, you know, you would DVD extras in uh, this version of the paperback. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool to see the stuff that I loved and couldn't put in there um, still get published. Has it surpassed your love of making movies, the, the idea of being an author? Um, I think it's what's now I consider my core career because it's where I, I, you know, I'm such a control freak. I like to be able to tell the story I want to tell. So yeah, I think yeah. that's where... That's, you know, let's put it this way. Like, I've had 
some offers to do certain movie projects and stuff during this whole period because fairy tales are quite hot in Hollywood at the moment. But, you know, I'm perfectly willing to turn them down in order to make sure that the books are as good as they can be. Gotcha. Because yeah. I just think that that's, you know, that's, at this point it's the most important thing. You know, when you have readers waiting for something, you don't want to to sort of, you know, disappoint them. Because right. I just think you end up feeling... Integrity rules. Yeah, so I what? Love that. So yeah. th well, thank you for being on. The, does the tour take you um, physically, or, or is the tour like a radio tour? Some, sometimes people say I'm on a radio tour and they're staying in their apartment, calling radio stations. Are you <laughs> are you literally well, traveling yeah. around? Well, the radio tour is keeping me in my, my apartment. I leave on a on a real tour um, tomorrow to these nine cities where I basically go to schools, um, kind of all over the country, and and sort of talk to you know, six to eighth graders usually, sometimes high schools, and uh, you know, kind of introduce them to the series and, and all that kind of stuff. So. All right, excellent. Um, the love of reading. Yes, yeah. Re yeah, reading. Rob and I are involved with the Literacy Council. We help uh, them... They they teach adults who can't read learn to learn how to read. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a pretty important thing that we've mm. kind of embraced. Um, well, what a great conversation! Can you uh, give us any websites so we can find um, find your book and 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 is it on Amazon? All those other places. Yeah, if you go to schoolforgoodandevil.com, dot com, that's where uh, you can you know pre order all the books and everything like that. Plus, there's the game that uh, the kids love. We've had over 2 million kids take it, and it tells you uh, which school you'll be in, whether you'll be in the school for good or the school for evil. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a good place to start. So, schoolforgoodandevil.com is where, where everything is. I'm going to play that on, game. Uh, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no, the parents are the ones that get the most addicted to it because they're determined to show their kid they'd be in the school for good and they never end up there, of course. So, um, oh, wow. I'm, try I'm trying to find Sheila Street in, in Ocala. I found it in, in Citrus Springs. <laughs> so, Sheila, and Pamela... Oh, where is it? Uh, it's, I think it's Pamela or it might be Mona. One of It's one of the two. Oh, okay. And, uh, okay, there's a Sheila, Sheila Drive in Citrus Springs. Okay, I'll, I'll have to look him up later. Nice. Uh, well, uh, Shoman Chenani, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. Good luck with everything. And uh, if you're ever in the area, come come around. And remember, next year, we, uh, see if you can get your films into the uh, Silver Springs International Film Festival here in Ocala. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a little Thanks break. So much, we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by myfwc.com. Safe boating is no accident. Times of sun and clouds today with a shower or thunderstorm in spots this afternoon and this evening. The high 84 at the coast, 91 inland. Partly cloudy overnight, though 64 inland, 70 at the coast. For tomorrow, times of clouds and sun with a shower and thunderstorm or two around at the afternoon. The high 84 at the coast, 89 inland. For Sunday, mostly cloudy with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. The high 81 to 85. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. So you need a credit card, but how do you choose? Let's compare the big banks to Florida Credit Union. They have rewards, and we do too. They have customer service. Hello, 24-7. They have celebrities. Hey, Danny. But with Florida Credit Union, there's no annual fee, no liability for fraudulent charges, and no 22% interest rates. Choose Florida Credit Union, and you'll not only have a great credit card, but you'll have the support and personal touch that the big banks, well, can't touch. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Federally insured by the NCUA. That was the sound of a tree falling. It could be your tree. You're going to have it trimmed, but never got around to calling Pride Tree Service. It could have fallen in a field, and now all you have to do is call Pride Tree Service, and they'll have it quickly out of the way for a great price. But don't wait until the tree falls. It may not fall in the field. It car, your house, or worse. Call Pride Tree Service today and avoid all the things before they happen. Pride Tree Service, 840-0750. That's 840-0750. Black Cow Composted Cow Manure is a terrific organic soil amendment. We start with cow manure from dairy farms and then compost it a full 90 days. The result is an all-natural, dark, rich soil amendment that's great for everything you grow. Flowers, vegetables, shrubs, trees, and lawns, too. Look for Black Cow in the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center. Black Cow, the mature manure, Black Cow. 
Right on the southwestern corner of the square sits one of the finest dining establishments in Florida, Mark's Prime Steakhouse and Seafood Restaurant. Mark's offers big city dining amenities in a charming and small town setting. It's a rare treat to experience both the ambiance and the exquisite cuisine in a friendly atmosphere. Ocala's finest restaurant serves the finest beef, the freshest seafood, premium wines, and naturally fresh vegetables. From valet parking to splendid service, Mark's offers the complete package. Check it out today. Mark's Prime Seafood and Steakhouse Restaurant. Putting the local back into radio. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. W-O-C-A News. Variety. Information. Now. Keep your arms and legs on the inside at all times. This is W-O-C-A. News Talk 1370. Visit the W-O-C-A website at www.woca.com. All right, thank you. Ten minutes before 8 o'clock. It's Friday, and we always have fun a little bit anyway on Friday mornings. there There's a, a lot of things you can do this weekend, and, and uh, they are movie-related. Of course, you can go to some of the mainstream films at some of the mainstream theaters. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you can go downtown Ocala to the uh, Marion Theater as well as the... Uh, Marion County Center for the Arts. What do we call that? That building again? Brick City. Center Brick City Center for the, for the Arts, arts. Yeah. Uh, which is another venue, I think, for some of the films that are being shown. Uh, so we're going to talk about films. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis <clears throat> passed away. He was one of the uh, co-stars, a, f- a frequent co-star with Clint Eastwood. He was seventy-nine years old. Um, I don't know too many things about him, but mm-hmm. but I, what I found sweet though was that um, his daughter, Juliette Lewis, after her father died, um, posted on Twitter, my dad, my dad, my dad, my dad, my dad, my love, my dad, my dad, my hero, my dad, my dad, my love, my, and then dot, 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 and then it shows you a link that takes you to the Instagram pictures of her father. Obviously, a man who was a good father, his daughter obviously loves him. Yes. Jeffrey Lewis, a prolific character actor who appeared opposite frequent collaborator Clint Eastwood as his pal Orville Boggs in Every Which Way But Loose, and its sequel has died. He was 79 years old. Yeah, he was a funny guy. He was the father of Oscar-nominated actress Juliette Lewis. Oh, she's famous too. I didn't know that. Uh, Family friend Michael Henderson said no other details were immediately available. Lewis began his long association with Eastwood in High Plains Drifter in 1973. Oh, gosh. He also appeared with the actor in Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, Mm -hmm. Bronco Billy, Pink Cadillac, and Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Wow. When I was in uh, Santa Monica, there was a a restaurant that was frequented by famous people quite often. It was Mm -hmm. called Zookies. It was on the corner of uh, Wilshire Boulevard and and Fifth Street. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I did not see... I know this is crazy to say, but I walked right past Walter Matthau. Oh, wow. And I did not see him. So I'm name dropping a little bit. But you know that brush with fame thing that you yeah. do when you meet famous people? Yeah. So I did not see him. But what happened was I walked past him and I heard his very, very recognizable voice. And when I turned around to see him, there was another person behind him. So I didn't even see the back of his head. I saw the back of the person's head behind him mm-hmm. uh, so I, I didn't even see him but I, I heard him I have no doubt in my mind that I heard uh, Walter Matthau and let's see um, the guy who played Archie Bunker what was his name Carol O'Connor yes I bumped into him there again didn't really I mean I didn't speak to him or anything in fact what I remember about that is he was picking up a platter of food because this was a restaurant and a deli uh huh and he was picking up a platter of f- food for a, fun- a funeral he was going to. That's all I remember about that. Yeah. You're not going to talk to a guy. And, and how would I know that except that I knew the, the lady who was working behind the counter. Right, Because I, right. I was a big flirt. And not that I, I'm not that anymore, but... Well, you're supposed to be. You're I'm a teasing, man. I'm teasing, I'm teasing. <laughs> but any, anyway, and then, and then, but the one I want to tell you about was this character actor whose name I don't remember. But I would see him there all the time. All the time. And I would see him in movies all the time. He was uh-huh. always in everything. And for a while, I, I kind of I knew his name. I looked it up or something. You know, back then, the internet wasn't anywhere. It was 1977, so just keep putting it all in perspective here. So I couldn't just look it up and see who he was, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd have to go somewhere to find out. But he was a very, very familiar face. And, and I asked somebody who he was, and they said, oh, he's a character actor. 
And so then after that, I would see him on all these films, or I'd see him in old films or in TV shows. He showed up in everything. And I've often wondered about that whole idea of being a character actor. It almost seems like when somebody is, that they don't have the notoriety that a star has. Yeah. And is it intentional on their part, or does it just happen for them that that they become a, like this guy, Jeffrey Lewis? It, se- it seems like he's being referred to as a character actor. And in fact, the article even began with you might not know the name or the face, but you've seen him in movies. And I think character actors are more versatile. It's because an they can play anything. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very interesting. And, and you have to wonder why. I mean, he's not a bad looking guy. It was, you have to wonder why he didn't become a star. Although yeah. although that, that, the word star is debatable. Exactly. All right. So talking about movies, I want to tell you about some of the, the, the movies that are at international film festivals like the one in Ocala mm-hmm. are typically independent films. Right. And now, I, I, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the way it is. Uh-huh. Even if it's got a major star. We have a major star in one of the films that's happening here. What's yeah, his name? Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. He's got one of his films. One here. of his films. So that's yeah. considered an independent film? Or we don't know. I I believe so because he's entering it into this contest so. All right, now I don't That's know a I whole lot I don't know a whole lot about these films, but I'm going to do my best to try to tell you. But I have some of the best independent films from 2014. Mm-hmm. Some of the best independent films from 2014 and I'll I'll give you a little gist of it. I won't do all of them. There's way too many, but I, I thought it would be fun because so, these were some of the films, and I don't know if they showed up at last year's uh, Silver Springs International Film Festival or not. Uh-huh. But, yeah, because uh, there's so many that go on around the country, around the world, yeah. independent film festivals. So let me go to the f- uh, phone first. Good morning. You're on the air. Larry and Robin. Hey. Is it Norm? Hi, Norm. Oh, yeah. How you doing, Norm? Good. I want to thank you for your contribution to my 90th. Oh, did you have fun? That that was was an that was an honor. (laughs) That is all. That's it, huh? Uh Well, well, did you have a good time? Oh, I almost missed it. (laughs) (laughs) Almost missed it. I'm glad you didn't miss it. Had my three nieces here and my youngest son, 64 years old. My youngest son. There you go. You have such a loving family. Yeah, they were they were all all very very very. Everybody loves everybody you, Norm. Showed up, and I got up in the morning and I didn't feel so hot. And I told them they were going over to my granddaughter's house for lunch, and I was going to skip it. And it got very quiet here. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, I want to thank you because you did a lot. To make it a beautiful day. Oh, that's very nice of you, Norm. Thank, Thank you. you. Norm. Well, have a nice day, folks. Thank you, Norm. Thank you, you, you too. too, Norm. Bye. You too. Such a wonderful so, day. Speaking of films, we made, yeah. a, we made a film for Norm. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, I like when we get r- rave reviews of the films we make. Yes. Our films are home movies. Our, our films are the equivalent <laughs> of Grandpa's Super 8 millimeter <laughs> movies when I was a kid. <laughs> Actually, Super I hadn't even come out yet. It was just regular 8 millimeter. Yeah. All right, so I, I want to tell you about some of these... Um, see, I think I clicked on the wrong thing. I want to tell you about some of these independent films. Okay? Okay. The number one... I'll, I'll just start from number one rather than going counting down. I'll just go number one. The number one independent film of the year 2014 was a movie called um, Boyhood. It was directed by Richard Linklater, who was a 2014 Sundance Film Festival Award winner. Nice. Uh, and it got an average critic wire rating of A after 106 people voted for it, voted on it. Uh-huh. So I have never heard of it. So now it's an independent no. film, number one in 2014. Uh-huh. Obviously, uh, you know, impressed some people who, who are knowledgeable about this kind of thing. The story is um, of a divorced couple... Uh, played by Ethan Hawke and Patricia Arquette. Aren't they famous people? Two famous people. Trying to raise their young son, played by L.R. Salmon. The story follows the boy for 12 years from first grade through at age 6 through 12th grade at age 17 and 18 and examines his relationship with his parents as he grows. That's all it tells you. Wow. But anyway, that was called uh, Boyhood, and it was the number one film of 2014 in the independent films. Now, you never nice. know. That could be a major film next year. It could. 
It could. You the, never know. The number two film was a film called Ida. It also had an A, but it would only had 60 people voting on it, so as opposed to 106, but it got an A. Uh-huh. Uh, directed by Powell, Powell, Powellkowski, uh, something like that, Powell, Powellkowski. Mm-hmm. And uh, let me let me tell you a little bit about it. I, I ran right up to the end of the segment here, but let, oh. me, let me tell you. Um, it's a story about Anna, who is an orphan, raised in a convent, preparing to take her vows when she's sent to visit Wanda, her aunt, and her only living relative, a cynical, hard-drinking Communist Party judge, Wanda reveals that Anna's real name is Ida and that her parents were Jewish and murdered during the Nazi occupation. Oh, sounds like a good one. Number two movie of the independent movies last year. Wow. All right, we'll take a little break. This is WOCA Ocala. My gosh, we're up against the clock. We'll be right back. 3 FM, The Source. News Radio. I'm Pam Puso. A monumental task in the small town of Fairdale, Illinois, where nearly every home has been damaged or destroyed by a tornado. At this time, we've got a secure perimeter around the area, and we're asking residents to either stay home or stay out of the area. Ogle County Sheriff Brian Van Vickel, one person was killed as the powerful storm system ripped homes off their foundations. The risk as we head into this afternoon and evening will be in place across parts of the Mid-Atlantic, the East Coast, the Gulf Coast, and also parts of Texas. Fox Media Meteorologist Maria Molina. A teenage boy is dead after a car plows into Los Angeles Harbor. We don't know if the, if the vehicle was driven into the water intentionally or accidentally. L.A. Police Captain Brian Witten, another boy in grave condition. Heading into the second round, Jordan Spieth has a three-shot lead at the Masters Tournament in Augusta. Fox News, we report, you decide. News early prime breaking down business news and its impact on your bottom line. Your world with Neil Cavuto. That's how I do business. That's why I am business. Bold positions and brash opinions on the topics America is buzzing about. The five. How do you think this will set in with the American people? This will be the pulse of the nation. Washington insight and political know-how from the best in the Beltway. Special report with Brett Bay. The epicenter of the political world is here. The number one place for fair and balanced coverage. Fox News Channel. What's wrong with working hard to make our lives and our kids' lives better. Nothing. At Fox Business, we don't have a problem with success. We have a very big problem with those who get in the way of it. We don't come out of the box bashing those who make money. Just the politicians stealing it and the bureaucracies wasting it. We're not just sitting behind a desk. We're out in the field, on the floor, with the folks. Because when a story moves forward, so do we. Fox Business, the power to prosper. Check your local listings. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. It's the end of the fiscal year, and that means budget cuts and number crunching. Now's the time of the year you're evaluating your expenses, planning your budget, and finding ways to save money and increase efficiency to maximize profits. Dex Imaging understands and delivers. Call Dex Imaging today for a free document management evaluation. Cutting your office expenses is as easy as calling Dex Imaging. 352-266-0333. Start saving money today and increase your bottom line with Dex Imaging. Printers, copiers, and fax machines that increase office productivity and save you money. No one understands your bottom line better. Call Dex Imaging today, 352-266-0333. Or check them out on the web at DexImaging.com. That's D-E-X-Imaging.com. Or call 352-266-0333 for your free document management evaluation today. Pay your taxes, eat your vegetables, watch your weight, mow the lawn, clean the house. We all have stuff we don't want to do. Isn't it about time you did something you wanted to do? Like getting your pilot's license? At Ocala Aviation, they make it fun and easy, and you can start by taking one of their discovery flights. For only $99, you get to go up in the airplane with an FAA.